1709, an ordinance of the City of Clarkson, Washington, amending Clarkson Municipal Code 10.52, establishing penalties for violation of park ordinances and procedure, procedures relating thereto. Thank you. I want to address that, Doreen Kramer. Uh, you know, I agree with you 100% that there's a lot of well intentioned people that are enabling these people to leave their junk. They need to quit dropping off their junk to them. And uh, I mean, that's a good start right there. Uh, and then Mike and uh, was it Bridget Mooney? As far as the jail thing goes and the crime, that will that will change once we get the new jail, believe me. We'll start putting them behind bars. Hi, I'm Deborah Graham, and I own a house in, I live in Lewiston and own a house across from Foster Park. Um, dropped off some pictures for you to look at, some photos while I speak about this. Ordinance 1706, section 1074, 070. Unattended personal property on city property prohibited. Property left unattended on a public right of way in violation of this section may be immediately removed, retained, and stored by the city. Notice the picture of the unattended items by the church. This was on the street by the church for Friday through this morning and called in at least twice over the weekend. Section 107450, number two, camps, camping, and resting may occur upon designated city property between the hours of 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. the following day. It does not allow sleeping during the day. Notice the guy sleeping on the mattress. This was taken today at 3 o'clock. Number 4A1, we see the pictures of excessive camping gear. The campsite must be limited to camp materials necessary to protect an individual from the elements. This section prohibits personal property not essential to living while camping. Uh, including such items as bedding, bicycle components, household furniture, scrap metal, etc. We have recent photos and videos of mattresses, a stack of bicycle parts, shopping carts, a satellite dish, a bull whip. None of these items are necessary for camping, and the bull whip is not only a daily nuisance, but is also a weapon. Number 4A2, a campsite must be limited to one structure per individual or household and include camping materials that occupy no more than 64 square feet per campsite. There are many photos and videos of campsites exceeding an 8 by 8 space with junk strewn throughout the park, not only during camping hours, but most of the day as well. The neighborhood looks like trash because of this. Number 488, attachment of camp materials to public infrastructure, including trees, is prohibited. Notice the picture of a tarp attached to the trees to hold it up. This isn't the first time. While the ordinance may be well written, it's only as good as its enforcement. Thank you for listening. I'm Melissa Andrews. I reside in the county. I am actually reading for Susan Marr Bishop, city resident, unable to attend due to illness. She states, I have been researching our law abiding homeless campers staying in and frequenting Foster Park. I have not found one so far who does not have a criminal background. Nearly two thirds are not from Clarkson, but are here because the handouts are better. I have posted the public criminal records of 32 Foster Park residents so far on Foster Park Advocates on Facebook. Of these 32, there were 29 with drug offenses, nine burglary or theft or both, five assault, and three sex offenders. Many of these have two, three, or four on their record with multiple convictions, and many have their charges dropped. Why are our police officers not running basic warrants when called to deal with them at the park? Isn't this standard procedure? And it also ensures officer safety, and it's done every time you pull someone over for a traffic violation. That's the end of Susan, the beginning of mine. My statement today, even though you roll your eyes and you don't want to hear it, you enforce 1706 as an emergency, so why can you not do the same for the new ordinance? The new plan is to move them to the county, still placing them in residential areas. I have spent years helping homeless who have lost homes due to disaster. Not one was ungrateful or expected something for nothing. <clears throat> As much as I respect the council and our police force, I must say, I am disappointed, and I know you would not tolerate crapping on your lawn, open drug use, and theft in your own front yards. So why do you expect your community to endure the same? 
These are not homeless. These are drug addicted vagrants and there is a difference. Hopefully the county will enforce their laws and hopefully the nonprofits will provide high barrier shelters with drug rehab with strict rules, none of which are being done at Foster Park. Residents are fed up with criminals getting away with crimes and being handled like children, not adults. If jails are full, enforce community service and make them work to pay for their mistakes. Parkston is tired of being the laughing stock of Washington and mattresses, umbrellas, and circus tents do not help. Just look at the photos that Jennifer gave you. Why are the, they allowed over eight by eight camping spaces? And why is 1706 not being enforced? And will you enforce the new one? Or will you continue to allow trash in the alleyways and in the streets? We can do better than this. Police are to protect and serve, but due to frivolous lawsuits, the only people being protected and served are the vagrants of Foster Park. My name is Chris Alexander and I live in Clarkston. I'm speaking for the citizens of Clarkston when I asked the council pass an ordinance limiting to four hours only parking of vehicles, recreational vehicles, including wagons, camping gear, or personal belongings in parking areas or on roadsides that are designated for the public's use. But our city streets are not campgrounds or RV parks. The people who are doing this are doing so because they choose to spend their rent money on drugs instead. And many of them have been kicked out of rentals and RV parks because they refuse to keep their area clean. So they have chosen to spread their filth to our streets, sidewalks, parking lots, and roadsides, as you can see by the photographs I have supplied for you. There are many of these offenders every week. This is a blatant, absolute disrespect and just plain irresponsible, arrogant behavior. If each and every one of you would not want these items planted in front of your home or in your church parking lot or on your street for days on end, please consider our request. Please review the photographs I have supplied for you. These are just a very few of the dozens of offenders. Thank you. I'm Doreen Kramer. I live in Fort Street, Carson. And what I have to say is, I hear a lot from these people called the elves who try to help them. They provide for them. I've heard where they even took mattresses that maybe were supposed to be uh, given to those who were displaced through the fires. I'm saying, how dare them take these mattresses? I mean, people who are displaced by the fires, they should get first choice. But the elves go down and they get them for them. And, and they pack all this garbage around. If the elves really want to help, they keep saying, oh, come on, don't be so mean because, you know, they're homeless and this and that. Well, they know where they can get help if they want it, but they don't even want to flip the finger. They just want to be enabled. They want to have handouts and everything else. I'm saying to the uh, elves, if there's anyone around here, if you really want to uh, have us to be more peaceful with these, homeless people who don't want to lift a finger, please use the money and the grants that you get to help them out, get a trailer and with a great big lock, throw their stuff in at eight o'clock in the morning, then come back to the park and unlock it with a bolt and let them, that way it wouldn't be in our alleyways, on our sidewalks, in our streets, in our parking spots, or even in our front yard. And this is what I'm asking, you know, do something to make more of a piece about it to where the citizens don't have to have their property being depleted from you know all this junk and all the mess and the uh, needles being laid around all everywhere and i don't think it's going to happen but i just pray that we get something done around here because it just it's it gets frustrating it gets tiresome another thing i like to say is also i know when we're talking to you guys that you guys are supposed to hear everything. But for us people who come to the meetings, take the time out to sit, we also want to hear what's being said. We want to hear each and every one of you because we're supporting you, uh, paying our you know money for you guys, and we want you to want to hear what you've got to say. And so I'm saying speak loud, let them hear you. I, I kind of got a voice I can speak very loud. But anyway, what I'm saying is, I don't know the real answer, but I'm saying there's gotta be something done. And like always, I say, I love our cops and I support them and I'm grateful for them. And 
I don't know what it's going to take. And hopefully our attorney will start getting, I don't know, go start asking other attorneys what to do, whatever it takes. Don't be scared of being sued. Just let's find out some kind of way we can maneuver or wrestle this thing out to where we can get this under control. But I don't know, it gets very frustrating because we're the ones, you know, our properties depreciate and everything else. Thank you. What is that? Yeah, my name is Howard Miller. I inherited some real estate apartments here in Clarkston, seven of them. And I tell you what, the rent was so low, I didn't have a turnover. When uh, uh, Jay Inslee said, Dot, they rent. That was four years ago. So I've been luckier in hell. But what I see is the corruption, the BS at the Clarkson School, Cedar Clarkson. You take the Aquatic Center, $6 million project that wound up with $12 million. Uh, my aunt, Medora Hamilton, she was city councilwoman here. And I told her, put the jail down there where the library was, but they put the jail here, you know. And then you got stormwater. I like I said, uh, so five, six dollars and five dollars for my rentals uh, used to be quarterly. Now it's monthly. And uh, like I said, uh, <coughs> there's so much corruption. I tell you what, the homeless people. You go over to Fifth Street, right down the street here, the welfare office, and close the damn doors. And they'll tell those people they're gonna have to find find a job. There's some that needs help, you know. <coughs> find. But when I see California Place in the parking lot there, I know whole place in the welfare office, you know. Uh, the corruption is so damn bad. Uh, I used to talk to Benjamin Nichols. I used to argue with him all the time right there in the courthouse. He told me flat out, we just threw our hands up. There's so much corruption going on. And then I told him about this mail-in ballots. Oh, it's legal, it's legal. How do you verify it? I want you to prove how to verify it. Now I need you to verify all this shit to you, okay? Enough's enough. Hi, I'm Chelsea Andrews. My age is 16. My address is 2032nd Avenue. I've been noticing that people at Foster Park have been sleeping on queen mattresses um, using family's tents, big pot, and there's big piles of stolen items. What happened to the eight by eight space each person was eligible to use? I was also wondering why the homeless are staying past the hours that are scheduled in the park. Um, did that child ever get their John Deere wagon back that was found that someone stole? My biggest question is, when the ordinance is passed, or if it is passed, will it be enforced, or will people continue stealing from kids and leaving things, living and leaving things in the park? I think it's sad that the city that I have been growing up in is being laughed at. They literally look like they have a circus tent in the park. I used to love that park, and I hate that kids in the area still cannot use it. I cannot believe even driving by a park, there are people in their undergarments and leaving trash all over. That is not the neighborhood I grew up in. Thank you. Um, with this documentary that I made, I did a day to walk, Clarkson Heights. Um, with this movie I'm making, I'm interviewing all kinds of people. And one that kind of stuck with me is uh, the gentleman that lives with his sister across the street from Foster Park. He had had enough, so he had, Approach some people over there and make a long story short, he's got a harassment charge on him and a displayed weapons charge. And so they're running to the gamut. He used to go to court cases, he's going to court, missing work, and all that kind of stuff. The reason I bring that up is because the other day I went by the park and witnessed an assault. I watch a gentleman cold cock a woman right in the face, knocked her to the ground, so I called it in. Uh, I told him what my name was, told him my phone number, told him where I was parked. Officers came, I watched it. They talked to the gentleman for a few minutes and then left. 
gentleman was allowed to stay at the park. Um, didn't get a call back, so I called the police department about four hours later, talked to Officer Sparks, I believe, and he basically told me there's nothing they can do. Neither one of these people were in a domestic relationship, and neither one of them wanted to press charges. My problem with that is, okay, I understand that. That's the law, but right where that guy socked that woman, right across the street was a birthday party going on for a one-year-old kid. So there was kids in that yard that witnessed that. You know, you talk about adverse child experiences, those kids are gonna see that and remember that. So my point in this is, I think you have to be careful because we're, we're getting in the area of selective enforcement here. You got a man that you're running through the ringer for harassment and weapons display, but you got a man that punches a woman and nothing's done. And he's allowed to stay in the park. And the gentleman that's sleeping on that mattress, that's the guy that punched a woman in the face. And here he is, you let him get away with that, they continue. And I think that's what's happening. Uh, we gotta be careful of selective enforcement, honestly, because that's kind of the, the road we seem to be going down. Thank you. Thanks, David. My name is Bridget Manny, and I am a resident of Clarkston, Washington. And of course, I've heard everybody what they've had to say several times. And at what point do we, do y'all take responsibility and stop giving us excuses? I have the utmost respect for everybody here and your positions, but we hear excuses, nothing being done. The whole city has become Crankston is a nickname. Methston is another nickname that we have out here. Um, at what point are we gonna stop this and stop just worrying about, oh, we're getting sued again today? At what point are the rights of the citizens the most important, the law-abiding citizens, not the poor little druggies who decided once again to make bad decisions in life? We have properties that are so overgrown and over trashed it, and nothing being done about it. I mean, uh, somebody was upset posting on Facebook about fireworks. Well, we're lucky the entire street of Poplar didn't get lit up with all the overgrown trash and people who can even throw their trash in a garbage can. This town looks like garbage. So people are treating it like garbage. And I'm hoping that somebody here will come up with an idea. And I know that police are limited on what they can do. Thank you to Governor Inslee, and we just won't go on that soapbox. But there is something that's gotta be done here with these druggies. There's gotta be. I'm just tired of the excuses. Everybody here is tired of the excuses. While we see them running rampant with their wild dogs, none of them on leashes, they're committing crimes, but however, when I'm taking my kayak out of the river, I'm getting searched. But Foster Park is, nobody's sitting there. There's no cops sitting there policing it. I'm sure that they go around and they do their routines, but we need police sitting there. If you guys are gonna allow them to take over our parks, then you guys need to put police there watching them 24 seven. Thank you, and thank you for y'all's hard work that you guys do every day. Thank you. Hi, Jeff. My name is Mike Dooney, and I live over on City Street. And uh, fortunately, I don't live right by the park. I live on east of, or west of uh, 15. Um, you know, I actually, I take lunch about an hour every day, and I'll take my truck. I'll just get away from my office and just decompress it. I, of the office and I usually go over there by the park. I've been going there for, for quite a while uh, before this this homeless problem started over here at the park. And uh, so I usually sit there over on the south side with that church and that recycle bin to my left. And uh, I haven't been there much lately just because it just disgusts me to see the park, but I like to go there because it's relaxing. But, you know, just in the few short times I've been there recently, I've seen a, a guy attack a lady on the street. And uh, because she tried to run away, and he uh, ran from the church over to the park and grabbed her and brought her back across the street, right in front of me. And then some other lady that was sitting there in her car over by the, the, by the recycle bin, 
told him to leave her alone. And uh, he went after her in her car. And I think she was on the phone with the cops, I'm not sure, but the cops showed up very shortly and I went over to the cop from what I saw. And I do believe he was arrested, but then a few weeks ago, there was a guy that pulled up on a bike with a pit bull on a leash, he was on a 10 speed. And uh, I called the cops immediately and they sat there and asked me so many questions for like 10 minutes, asking me questions about the guy, who I was, my phone number, my address. By the time they were done asking all my questions, the guy went to like six different groups and then left. It was just frustrating, like, well, why do you need all my information? Just get somebody over here and check this out and see what this guy's doing. Um, it just wasted time. It was frustrating. And people, people went to the, the police department. We got someone there. And I'm not against pit bulls, but I think you can understand my concern when I see a pit bull running loose through the park. And, uh, you know, I drive by there a lot whenever I come from. Walmart or wherever down, you know, I'll usually take diagonal over to, to Libby or and cross and go, go home that way. And pretty much every time I drive by the park, there's <coughs> multiple dogs running loose through the park. At least two, three, four dogs every time. And it's just concerning because I, I would disrespect a city like that. Now, if you guys do something about it. 1709, an ordinance of the City of Clarkson, Washington, amending Clarkson Municipal Code 10.52, establishing penalties for violation of park ordinances and procedure, procedures relating thereto. Thank you. Ready for council comments. I'll go first. This is the most local one, I guess. Uh, first off, um, let's be real, the, uh, the name Craxton for Clarkson uh, came here long before um, the homeless issue. Let's be real. I moved here in 2016 for one of the first things I heard. Uh, second, I uh, I agree. Jane is a terrible person. Uh, three, I have been very vocal in positions on uh, the city issues uh, on the uh, homeless problem. Um, I think that I think my reputation uh, precedes itself and. Uh, we're trying to do our best. We're passing the uh, new what 1709, 1709 ordinance. Um, it'll be a great piece of uh, tool for our police police officers. <sighs> Number four, uh, with uh, Councilmember Steve being gone and now absent, I challenge anyone in the public to step up and take his place. I've been very vocal about that. People have challenged me, challenged others on the seat. Here's your chance. Put your money where your mouth is, step up, come check out the job. It is not as easy as it looks. It's not as easy as it seems. And five, Ed, you're a good man. And uh, you, will, you will be missed. And I wish you uh, the best on your future endeavors and uh, spend time with your family. Anyone else? I have, yeah, I have a lot of notes. I don't, I don't think I can even address a, a portion of them. Um, we do have a law limiting RV parking and forcing them to move. Uh, the one, the one thing with, with four hours being a limit, that would you would have to apply that law evenly across the city. So if you just park your RV in front of your house, you have four hours to get that thing moved. Or you know, we can't. It's, it's a little trickier than that. I, under, I understand the thought behind it, um, but we do have a law that limits it to 24 hours. So if, there's, if there is one, it, it has to be moved in 24 hours if there is a complaint filed. Um, uh, we, we, we do, I, I understand the sentiment behind um, acting without fear of a lawsuit. I, I understand that, but we, we can't afford to lose something where we would lose the police department or uh, our, our public works department. If we lose a lawsuit and lose a you know a chunk of our budget, which is tight anyway, that that would have such horrible adverse effects on the city. So we we do I understand the sentiment, but we we do have to act thoughtfully and 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 move ahead so we don't damage the, the existence of the city. Um, 
Uh, um, oh, it, 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 I, I appreciate you coming here, and, and I and I understand every reason why it's it's time to move on. It sounds like you have uh, some some interesting and fun places to visit to go see family and friends around the world, and uh, I wish you the best of luck there. Thank you. And uh, we we do have something to deal with the the things that have been being left in the street, in the parking lot, in the roadway. Those those things, as I understand the conversations I had right before this meeting, can now be addressed and taken care of. So there just isn't crap sitting all over the city and the street. Um, if, I think can, can I direct them toward you or Todd after the meeting if they want any clarification on that? Sure. That's so so done. All right. Uh, and that, I'll 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 just leave it at that. Thank you for coming, and we're we are trying. We're doing what we can. Of course, when I said sure, I mean Frederick the Jewel. <laughs> I said both your names. And I just want to address that Doreen Kramer. Uh, you know, I agree with you 100% that there's a lot of well-intentioned people that are enabling these people to leave their junk. They need to quit dropping off their junk to them. And uh, I mean, that's a good start right there. Uh, and then Mike and uh, was it Bridget Mooney? As far as the jail thing goes and the crime, that will that will change once we get the new jail, believe me. We'll start putting them behind bars. So. And thank you too, Ed. I, I didn't uh, get to know you. I wasn't on your committee, uh, but uh, you did help me out one time. Uh, concerned citizen had a problem and you took care of it. I appreciate it. Anyone else on council? Yep, I just have a little a couple things. So um, Todd Richardson, thank you so much for your help and guidance and also working with our state attorney on how to have some actual solutions to put forward. Look forward to how that works out here in the coming months. Um, also wanted to thank Melissa and Chelsea Andrews for their back in the saddle disaster relief for really working hard to gather necessary supplies for the victims of the fires in the local area and their tireless work in making um, really important um, supplies available to many families whose homes weren't the ground. So I really admire the work you've done. Thank you. Thank you. And then also to Ed, it has been a pleasure working with you. I am so sorry to see you go, but I am excited for you and the, the plans you have 